spring had finally sprung on the mountain. Trees were blossoming and flowers were blooming everywhere on the divide. And I had this overwhelming urge to make a floral print dress and I had just the pattern for it. And the perfect print in my stash. I've had this 50s uh, factory folded retro pattern for um, some years and I really wanted to use this pattern to make a dress. I was going to make one with long sleeves. So as I unfolded um, the this pattern for the first time ever and spread it out on my new cutting table. Wait, what? Maybe I should back up. This is how I used to do it. What other YouTubers affectionately call the floor troll. I found it strangely ironic that I had to assume the floor troll to put together this cutting table. But at least now I could say goodbye to sore back and sore knees. Floor troll no more. It was one of the only purchases I needed to make right when I moved into my sewing studio. So after um, getting the fabric out of my stash and ironing it up, I started cutting out the pattern. I told myself that if I didn't have enough fabric, I just would make the sleeveless version of this dress, which was better for the warmer weather anyway. It was no real big deal, and I really loved this fabric. I'd been wanting to use it for years. Problem was, this fabric was from my stash, and the pattern only ran in one direction. I bought this fabric over a decade ago, so there was no getting more. Um, so I had a little left over, um, but not enough for a bodice. So I started cutting out a waistband. So what was at first a dress turned into a sleeveless dress, and then turned into a skirt. I held on to the remnants of this fabric because it was pretty, I loved it, maybe I'd line a bag with it or something. After initially looking at this pattern, I thought these were at first darts, but then I looked up the directions and found out that it was a front opening so that you could get the dress on. I decided to, um, since I was making a skirt, to put the zipper in the back on the center back seam. So. I stitched my seams, my initial seams. And then when I stitched my center back seam, I left an opening for a zipper. It's important to um, press um, as you go when sewing. Um, so once I was done with all my seams, I pressed them flat. And then the back seam, I pressed open uh, because I was going to place a zipper in back and then I uh, went about the process of finishing all my seams on my overlock machine. While uh, my sewing room wasn't completely put together, um, it was put together enough to work in and I was, I was very glad because I had a video upload schedule to get back on track with. And when you're easily distracted like I am, any disruption in your routine can be detrimental, no matter if it's a beneficial one or not. This is my invisible zipper foot for my sewing machine. And I really wanted to talk about this. A lot of YouTubers that have channels like mine, invisible zippers are the bane of their existence and they used to be mine until I got this zipper foot. It actually really helps me put a zipper on a garment. The tab of the zipper spiral feeds directly into that little groove 
and holds it open so that I can stitch it. So I can put them in not just well, but beautifully. This zipper was also from my stash. It happens to be a vintage one. And um, it was a bit too long for this project. So I'm going to shorten it here and it's really easy to do this. Just like so. This is how a professional seamstress taught me how to do it. And then I finished it off by tacking it down to the um, seam allowance. Next up was the pleats. And uh, this is how I marked them. There's probably better ways to mark them, but this is the one that I chose. Um, it just seemed the simplest for me. The pattern called them soft pleats, but I'm pretty sure they're just pleats. Um, at least just called pleats now. So once I had them all pinned, I, uh, I called it a day. The next morning I basted those pleats in place so that I would so that they wouldn't move around when I was uh, sewing them. I had to adjust them a little bit um, because this was now a skirt and not a dress. Um, so I needed them to fit into a waistband and not just attach to a bodice. I have another shorter video um, that's a tutorial for various different kinds of basting stitches. So I'll put that in the description below if you're interested. When I'm hand sewing, I rarely ever use a thimble because they kind of um, annoy me, they get in my way. Waistbands always need to be stable. So I put interfacing on this waistband and then prepared it for uh, attachment to the skirt. Whenever I'm nearing the end of a project, I always lose patience um, for the slower parts of uh, putting something together. Um, so when I remembered I had to actually hand sew the waistband part of it, um, yeah, that, that bugged me. I opted for hook and eye closure. And uh, I was really pleased how the waistband turned out since I really didn't use a pattern for it. I had now come to the last step, putting in the hem. And I, this is, this is usually my go-to um, hem finish. Um, I apply flexi tape and, uh, you know, the lacy stuff and uh, turn up the hem, press it. And then I tend to want to hand sew them in uh, for various reasons. Um, not to mention the fact that uh, my sewing machine doesn't like to put in this type of hem. That, and I could watch a, a TV program as I uh, put it in. It is slower going, especially when you're watching uh, TV, but I was also kind of eager to finish this Chinese uh, fantasy drama that I'd been watching. It featured gardens and flowers and really matched the aesthetic of my skirt quite well. Now for a word from my publicity manager. Oh, I'll put you over here now. Thanks for watching till the end. And um, if you like to see me make things and my little motivational puppy, um, then um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell so that you're notified every time I have a new upload. Um, I think that's all I have for you today, so bye now. See you next time. 
I drove around for a while trying to find a nice um, park without people in it, and I figured during the week I'd be able to do that. Um, but alas, there were, you know, some people there, and um, a couple of them even came and let their pit bull play in the park in the uh, on the slide uh, that was is for kids, and my Chihuahua would not stop barking at it. So it was hard to maintain the aesthetic of quiet and peaceful park-like surroundings. Anakin also had to test out the, the comfort level of my skirt, and this is what he did while we were waiting for the guy with the mower to uh, finish his job of uh, mowing the park, um, the green that day. Anyway, if you got this far into the video, then um, thank you very much, and uh, let me know by uh, typing in the keyword spring down in the comments, just to let me know that you really like my videos. Anyway, that's all I have. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a great day or night. Bye now.